Alright, so, uh, today we're going to talk about batteries. Marine RV starting battery. That large group 27 in uh, uh, parallel. Here is the actual one I bought, 12 volt, 100 amp. And it's because they're about the size of a 24, but the specs... Thanks for clicking on this video. Three, two, one. Welcome to Florida Keys Life. So, uh, today we're going to talk about batteries, boat batteries, and about what I did to my boat and the good things that it's done for me and, and why I did it. Uh, it's actually part of my video that I'll show a link to at the end of the video. I want to point out that the only reason I'm even filming this today is that crap weather. I'll throw this brief clip early this morning. It dumped. Moves getting after it like dump dumped and it's windy out today so tomorrow heading out on the water but today we're learning about this stuff on my stingray and I forgot to put two critical parts the main one being the batteries now some of you may know some of you may not but when you buy a new boat the batteries usually are not installed from the manufacturer at the factory usually they're installed at the dealer so you can get various different batteries in my particular dealer installed three batteries i'm assuming towards manufacturer recommendations and they were lead acid batteries group 27 in fact right here continental marine rv starting batteries so it's that 800 cold cranking amp thousand marine cranking amps that's at 32 degrees or cold cranking amps sorry is at 32 degrees and thousand is somewhat above that uh, so not a bad battery however you have to understand how a lead acid battery works it has acid inside the cells a fluid that can dry out and do different things and you have to service it see these caps pop off and you have to keep the water filled up now on a boat much like a car that can move around a boat gets jostled around and moves around even more you're getting some rough water you're bouncing around the last thing you want in those cells is fluid that can be bouncing around and causing grief or something that you have to service or something that can get uh, there's all kinds of things that can happen to a lead acid battery you don't want them on a boat okay we have technology these days that's way better than lead acid batteries and so uh, i went with <clears throat> i'll show you here in a second on my starting batteries uh, a gel gel a dry agm battery a dry cell agm battery made by odyssey you can mount them in any direction because they're dry. You don't pop cells off, you don't put water in it. You can mount them sideways, upside down, whatever. Shock proof, all that good stuff. And then for the house, I, did, I installed lithium iron phosphate batteries, which are what all the new technologies, electric cars, solar batteries for solar systems in your homes, lithium iron phosphate, and that technology has come a long ways recently. You can't use those for start batteries, although there's some manufacturers that are doing that these days. I did a lot of research into the ones I use. I actually have a big solar system on my house in Utah that we're selling. So I went through all that process and battery specs and whatnot. So I know a fair amount about that, fair amount about that. So I researched and I found these Golden Mate lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, they're actually really affordable and they've worked really well. And the thing about a lithium iron phosphate battery that's different is they're completely dry. You can mount them in any, direct, any uh, direction the same way. You don't have to service them. <clears throat> and they hold their, the voltage for much longer. So they disperse the amperage out and they keep that voltage steady. And so, like I've been run out all day running. I mean, you know, on my boat, I've got two live wells. Been running two live wells. Had everything going on the boat, stereo, sound system, lights in the head, all that stuff. The lowest I've ever been able to get the voltage on my house circuit down to is 13 flat. Um, <clears throat> now my old boat, my Yamaha, I had two live wells as well uh, and had one group 24 deep cycle battery on the house and at about five hours of running one live well, that was about it. Uh, so now I can be out all day. I know when we go to dry tortugas trips, I'll show them when you're coming up, we camp overnight. We got to run a, an anchor light all night. So you got to think about your battery capacity. Your bat battery capacity on a boat is critical. And you don't want to have to be running the engines all the time. Those things are expensive. 
They're, they're expensive to maintain, they're difficult to maintain, and fuel's expensive. Um, so if you can go 24 to 48 hours on your batteries running everything on your boat without having to charge, that's 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 where the advantage is of going to a lithium iron phosphate battery system. So let me show you what I did. Actually, before I do that too, so one other thing I forgot in my upgrades and modifications video was this helm pad that I put in from West Marine. Now you can get them from Sea Deck and Marine Mat in different places, but this west marine version i've got a clean it you can see there but uh it's it's an inch thick and it is comfortable as heck and it's mm -hmm. half the price of sea deck and everything else i know some people gawk at me and go oh well it's west marine stuff you're a cheapskate well it's actually good quality um and it uh, seems to work awesome now they didn't quite have the color that matched the other pads here yeah i'm not that picky of a guy okay so in here in the battery compartment i don't know if i've ever showed you this in here so the way that this was set up initially um, was all three of those batteries. You had the two house, there's two start batteries, two engine start batteries, and you had one house battery, and then you had all this space. That gave you extra space. So the, the trash can actually sits right in here, if you can see. So that's the side stop in my particular boat. You gotta be careful about measuring all this stuff. It's real critical. So once I took um, the old batteries out, I figured out what space I had. Uh, and then these Odyssey batteries, these are a group an AGM 34M. Um, they're about the size of a group 24 to start battery. If you notice, cold cranking amps are 850. It's actually 50 above that large group 27 uh, lead acid battery. So this size of battery, more than adequate for that uh, to start those engines. They're 1.8 liter Suzuki's, 200 horsepower. Okay, so and then here's the lithium iron phosphate. Uh, they're 12, rated at 12.800 amp hour battery. So I have two of them hooked in uh, uh, parallel uh, to make one 200 amp hour battery bank. So now these are about the size of a group 27 that we took out, but see, I was able to fit the second one in behind it. Now, the way I was able to make them fit was instead of using those rigid battery mounts that have a pan and then have that rigid top that go on the top with the bolts it's pretty standard in a lot of boats that took up too much room so i bought these battery mounts off of amazon i'll show you they bolt to the bottom and these straps uh, have two screws on stainless hooks well this one's plastic actually i like that better though because it doesn't rot or corrode uh and then it cinches the, each battery down that way so it takes up very little space so when you have tight uh battery hold down requirements that's a good style of hold down to use then i put them all on foam because they're they're still bouncing around you got to be you want to be careful uh with your batteries they're expensive and you don't want them to get fit you get fail so they're on foam all those batteries are on foam and they're all cinched down with these cinches and then i actually store my extra life jackets above here that fit in super tight to where i got to squeeze them in tight and they actually provide extra hold and then i've still got stuff that i put in here i took it all out so you can see it uh, but i took all the gutted all that out made it a nice space figured out what space i had to work with uh and put that in there and I tell you, these Golden Mate batteries, they a uh, little over $200 a piece. Um, so I've got, you know, 450 bucks or so in the, into the one 200 amp hour bank, but I can run that. I can run this boat for about 48 hours before I need to recharge. Now, my dealer was, they didn't, they didn't think this was gonna work. They told me don't, for one, don't do AGM batteries for the engine start batteries. So they are age, they are dry cell AGM batteries, but here's a problem. I've, I found in experience working in the marine industry for a lot of years, a lot of people in the marine industry don't understand electricity and battery chemistry affects things a little bit, but not a ton. So what you got to look at is the specs of what the, the, the stator, that's one of the disadvantages of the Suzuki over the Mercs or the Yamahas is it doesn't have an alternator. It has a stator with a regular, but it has a battery isolator that's part of that's mounted on the engine. Uh, I'll probably show you that when I service the motors. So the stator itself is rated for 44 amps and then it, show, it gives you the voltage specs. So I'm gonna show you on the laptop what those are. And then you look at what the charging specs are of the AGM battery. And you see they're both harmonious with each other. They, they work fine. And I have almost a hundred hours of them working fine. Uh, I, I had one tech tell me that, oh, you're gonna have all these ghost electrical problems. Ghost electrical problems are not caused by battery chemistry. They're not also not caused by charging chemistry or charging parameter. They're charged by bad, they're, they're caused by bad connections. If you have some boat that has this ghost thing where this random alarm's going off or this light's doing this or this won't work, nine times out of 10, it's a connection. 
some connections not making a good connection in the pin or the recess or it's corroded or something like that it's not because of battery chemistry i can almost promise you that uh so anyways they work fine and then they also said oh lithium iron phosphate oh my goodness it ain't gonna either you ain't gonna be able to charge that well a couple of things so you just do the same thing as the agms you look at the charging parameters you look at the output parameters of the stators but then there's this extra one now the charging parameters the mo the stators of the motors are a little bit higher than what the lithium iron phosphate will allow and i'll show you that but here's the thing both of these engines have battery isolators and both outputs one one output goes to the engine start battery for each respective motor the other one goes to the house bank both output legs of the of the one side of the battery isolator go to the house bank and so that house gets charged pretty quickly for one because it's it's one house battery essentially it's two hooked in parallel um, but because there's so much battery on there and it's forgiving that that output of that stator it, can, it has plenty of capacity to absorb the amperage that that stator is putting out and then with the isolator it can vary it can choose to send energy or amperage to the engine start bank or the house. And so it does a, a really good job doing that. I have not had a, a single issue. Second issue, or second reason why this works and why it's silly to think that it won't, is that if you if you do have some problem, so, so the max voltage I'll show you on the Golden Mates is below what Suzuki says the stators will output. So if that was going to be an issue in charging my lithium iron phosphate batteries, the plan is, is just a DC to DC battery charger it's a small little device i'll show you on the screen they're inexpensive they're reliable it's very similar technology as a battery isolator and so in that case if we had a problem with these lithium iron phosphate batteries were were uh like like disconnecting they have a battery management system on it and it was completely disconnecting the battery because it was getting overcharged all we would simply do is take that leg of the battery isolator off of the the engine so the engines are not actually charging that battery and then you hook this little device this battery DC to DC battery charger from the engine start batteries to the house battery. And then what it does is it doesn't connect the engine battery to the house battery when it's being used or, or loaded. But what it does is it allows amperage to charge from one to the other. A battery combiner is different, different technology on a combiner. You could use that too, but it's not as great because batteries when you charge them they can't be separate capacities to charge the same isolator isolates the two and charges on two different chemistries a battery combiner would take those batteries so if you have one battery that's got 100 amp hours and another battery that's got a 200 amp hours it's not going to charge the 200 amp hour battery all the way full if it's combined but if it's isolated that's different it will charge and so if for whatever reason my system didn't work if suzuki didn't like charging these things or these things didn't like the charge of the Suzuki's, we would just do a DC to DC battery charger in there. It's a reliable system. It's very small, it's, it's inexpensive and relatively easy to do. However, everything works just fine. Now, you talk about load. Here's the great thing that Stingray does on their battery switches uh, that makes things awesome. So on these switches, you'll see <clears throat> we have a combined setting. So here's my engine battery. You turn them on and off. This turns both engine batteries on and off. Now, if that battery goes bad and my port engine won't start, for example, then I can just combine it and start off of my start battery, starboard start battery, or vice versa. So the likelihood of both of these batteries going bad together is slim to none ever. So, if, but if I do have one go bad, I can combine them and start. Not that uncommon. But I also come over here in my house if my house battery dies and I have to use my electronics or something, if the BM, let's say the BMS shuts off on these batteries and all of a sudden I got no house and I need, I need navigation to get home, I can combine this switch, which combines the house to the engine battery. And I can run off my engine batteries to get home, run all of the electronics and all of that stuff at the house while I'm running in an emergency, combine that way. If both of these engine start batteries go bad, I can combine my house batteries to my engine batteries and start and get home there's almost no scenario ever where i would be stranded because of lack of power now if i have lead acid batteries and they go bad much more commonly um, the likelihood that i would ever be completely stranded that all three would go up go bad is pretty low uh, but it's even lower with this setup now down here in the keys some of these places that we take you we're out a long ways we don't have cell coverage 
Uh, we, I do have a sat phone that we take with us and I've got the radio, but um, it's much better to just straighten your own stuff out. So this way, it's almost impossible to be, have a dead battery in some fashion. So now let's go inside. I'll show you on the screen all these specs and how they work and how they find them. The links to all this stuff, the battery straps that I used, all this stuff will be in the description. Um, but here we are. I looked in the Suzuki owner's manual where I thought I saw it, but I didn't see it. They just, they just specify that it's a 12 volt, 44 amp output uh, stator. Um, and I remember reading, it must have been the service manual, it was either 14.2 or 14.4 output voltage. Now, so here's a Golden Mate website. They always have this code up, Golden Mate, you get 10% off. I don't have a special discount code for you, but I'll put the link in the description. If you like this video and like what I have to tell you and want to buy the battery, if you follow the link, I get a little bit of a uh, little piece of it, I suppose. I'm super happy with my Golden Mate battery, by the way. So here is the actual one I bought, 12 volt, 100 amp. I bought two of them at a time, a two pack for 239, uh, which is a smoking deal for lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now, if you see down here, it'll show you the specs on this battery. Let me go down if I can find the charging. Charge voltage 14.4. Standard at 20 amps, it'll take up to 50 amps at a time. So those those outboards only put out 44. So if you, if whatever reason the isolators, battery isolators, are sending all of the current to the one battery pack, so one battery can take 50 amps, two batteries can take 100 amps altogether. It only makes 44. That's 88 amps. So it can't overcurrent it. Theoretically, could over voltage it and put the BMS in over voltage protection. But I haven't had that. I mean, I've been out where I've been trolling for hours on end, so the alternators are running at a decent output rate, and there's been no overcharging. I've been on long runs, like I said, almost 100 hours on the boat, no problem. Extremely happy with them. Uh, these are the Odyssey batteries, so right from the Odyssey website that I have. They're 34s, and it's because they're about the size of a 24, but the specs meet the specs that Suzuki have. Uh, for cold cranking amps, 850, and reserve capacity. Uh, and so uh, those batteries are plenty enough to start those. In fact, I could, you could even start those with bigger motors because the thing about these Odyssey batteries, the, the, the construction of them are such that the plates or, or the way that the energy comes out of these batteries is a lot quicker than uh, lead-acid batteries. And so for starting batteries, they're phenomenal. Uh, now, if you buy those through Amazon, which I'll also provide the link, it's even a little bit cheaper. See, 369 a battery. If you buy them straight through Odyssey, they're 397. They're expensive, uh, but you want to get home, and the start batteries are critical. Now, it's kind of a little funny that the house batteries are cheaper than the start batteries, but uh, again, I'm out in places where I want to get home, so that's that's what we got so i really appreciate you guys watching this video and following along i hope you learned something uh if you think there's something else i should be doing differently or consider please let me know in the comments and uh have a great day okay so uh i forgot to include the dc to dc battery charger so here's renogy you can see here they're a popular brand and they make marine stuff um, so there's a dc to dc 30 amp uh, dual input um, battery charger that would work if my uh, if I was actually having a charger with my lithium ion. You can also go to Amazon and there's a billion options. Victron makes one. Um, they're not super cheap. Here's a here's a little bit cheaper version of a Renogy one and it's a solid one so you could mount it uh, up inside under my battery compartment and you would just take the power coming into the engine start batteries, put the output to the deal and it manages them. You see how this one uh, has the for a gel, AGM, or lithium uh, batteries. So uh, here's another company. Here's this Power Clean, a little bit cheaper. Also has a lithium uh, setting. And so if I didn't have, if I had trouble charging my lithium ion batteries with the stators of the uh, Suzuki motors, this is the, the option to fix that. So lithium ion is still the best option uh, for your house batteries. They just run forever pretty durable, they don't have fluids in them, just a much better option for a marine environment.